Hey, welcome to the Pat Tomasulo podcast. Ooh, that came in a little hot. A little bit. You can fix that in post, right? Oh, yeah. Sounded can great you? to them. You can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was perfect levels, James. Thanks, buddy. Who, who said that was too loud? Not me. I didn't say it was too loud. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of the Pat Tomasulo podcast alongside producer James. Hello. Producer James, the California kid. That's right. Spent a week out in the big. Five days. Was it five days? It five days. Close enough. It's a work Thursday, week. Friday, Saturday. Spent Friday. a work week. Yeah. Out in Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Back home. Hobnobbing with the big swinging dicks of the entertainment industry. <laughs> and now he's back in my basement slumming out on this podcast. Hey, this is where I want to be. Oh, I'm sure it is. It is. Oh, I'm sure it is. It's where you want to be. It where is. are you going in a couple weeks? I'm going to New York on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> it's where I want to be, he says. I'm here. Feeding me lies. Feeding me. You only know. <laughs> yeah, if they only knew. If you only knew. If you, I know. I know, James. Oh, I know. You said you didn't like LA, huh? You hated it? That's, that's, those are some words off camera. It's not for me. Yeah. LA's, Wait, whoa, LA's... now you're going to shy away from what you said? <laughs> like, like bl- let, me, let me just ease your mind real quick. We don't have any listeners in Hollywood, okay? <laughs> There's no tastemakers or bookers or comedy club managers from California who are li- you might as well be shouting this into the e- into the air yeah. in a closet somewhere because that's about as good a chance as anybody out there has of hearing this. Now be honest, James. You said you hated it, it's and not, tell everybody why you hate it. It's not for me. The people out there. It's not. It's not my vibe, dude. The energy is different. People yeah. in Chicago. I'll talk. Can I tell you, you what like I like the about? Real. You like the real. Let me tell you what I like about Chicago instead yeah. of what I don't like about LA. Okay. People in Chicago yeah. are real. They're yes. friendly. They're helpful. They're nice. And it all feels genuine. Right. Uh, and it's worth the bad weather. In so. LA, it feels fake because everybody's in the industry everybody and wants everybody something. wants something from you. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, it, but it was, it was a learn, it was a fun, I've never been out there for work like this before. It was a fun learning experience. Yeah. Got to do it. And well, I'm that's good. Never going back. So. Well, I'm glad you had fun. He was out there for the uh, for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Yeah, uh, Netflix, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is the streaming platform that did not even answer my email. <laughs> and you know what? I don't blame them. If I were them, I wouldn't answer my email either. I, 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 they, they did answer my email. I know people at Netflix. Yeah. I am friendly with a, a, a big guy at Netflix who always returns my emails. He's the best. Brandon is the best. I don't want to say his last name because mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know. Yeah. I don't want to name drop, and I also don't want to compromise anything. Right. But, you know, he sent, uh, he sent my stuff over to their, to their comedy people. And my guess would be what happened was uh, one of those comedy guys probably clicked on the link mm-hmm. and saw a uh, <laughs> a straight cisgender white male of a certain age. I was like, "No, nah, we're good." I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he has a. I'm sure he has a lot to say. I'm sure he probably <laughs> rants. Does he rant? Is he? Is that what he does? Mm-hmm. That would be a really novel concept for a straight white male comedian. Beefy rants. And I would imagine that it was never even viewed by them. Your loss, Netflix. That's right. Your loss. Because guess who's sitting at 108,000 views? That's right, baby. 108,000. Let's go. 108,000. You know what's amazing is that I see 108,000 after a month, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Uh I mean, Mr. Beast would have a stroke if he put out anything with 108,000 views. There are some comedians that if they put out their special mm-hmm. and if they had 108,000 views after a month, they, they'd go sell insurance. <laughs> right? What a glass half full. What you looking I'm at just it? saying. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying that for me, I'm, you know, it's a lot. 
<laughs> it's a lot, but for it's great. But for comedians who have followings, one hundred eight thousand would be enough to to. It, I'm not saying to jump off the roof, but you'd make it onto the roof and do some cell searching. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, "Is this worth even continuing?" So, to those of you out there who've uh, who've not watched the special and who've not shared the special with their multitude of friends, family, and followers, get on it, would you? Yeah, come on. You have no idea how fragile comedians are. You don't know the holes in our hearts that we're trying to fill with the adoration and love of people we've never met. I was, you know, if if you would have told, here's the thing, if you would have told me, yeah. what do they say? Comparison is the thief of joy. Is that how it goes? Something like that. That sounds sounds about right, right? Right. Yeah. Sounds like something you'd read on it a poster. Like a, it's true. It is. But uh, obviously, you don't know me very well. Because <laughs> if you would have told me, here's the thing. Do you are you guilty of this? Do you always move the goalposts? Yeah. Right? Like, yes. if you would have told me after a month you're going to have 100,000 views on this special, I would have busted a nut. Right. But now once that I get it, I'm like, yeah, but this guy has a quarter of a million. And you shake your head, but you just told me you're no, guilty. I, I'm of it. like, I'm shaking my head at me because it's like, yeah, like, I do the same thing. You want to be the best. Yeah. You know? I don't even, I don't even, uh, yeah. Come on. I don't even know necessarily that you want to be the best. I just want to be better than whichever guy I think of in that moment. Sure. It, you know. Well, you want to be better than you, I guess. 107,000. I think that is better than me. I would have never. No, dude. Come on. The special rips. You're great. Let's stop. You are. Let's not turn this into a therapy session. I mean, bro. We could do that off camera. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you could save me a couple of dollars this week. <laughs> You know, yeah. you could save me that copay this week if I could just dump all of my shit onto you this week. Amen. That'd I'm be here. very helpful. I'm here for it. Ah, uh, yeah. I had a, I had a, cra- I had a crazy weekend. Yeah, what'd you do? It's crazy. Yeah. You want to know what I did on Friday? Tell me all about it. I ate a cheeseburger. <laughs> Great. That's that's the pinnacle. Something. Millions of people in this country do every single day as a routine part of their existence. Yeah. For me, eating a cheeseburger, it, it might as well have been Easter Sunday again. That's what a special, special day it was. I got to do things like this. Mm. I got to do things like this very um, spontaneously. Because if I think about it, if I think about all the all the fat and the calories and the carbs and the salt, yeah. it was I would never do it. Right. I would never do it. But my, my darling wife was getting a, a treatment that day for her autoimmune issues. And I had to pick her up. I'm like, you deserve a treat. That way I can blame her. See how I do that? <laughs> I'm not I'm not eating the burger for me, James. How noble. I'm eating the burger for her. I'm sacrificing <laughs> my own well being. <laughs> <laughs> and so we stopped off and god let me tell you yeah cheeseburgers are delicious <laughs> they are so good i often think sometimes i'm a big animal lover mm-hmm. as you know that's why i got to avoid these animal videos can't see any cows with a personality yeah and i really could i could be a vegetarian i could rebel against the the agricultural infrastructure in this country and i i could i could except i can't give up i can't give up cheeseburgers and i can't give up italian meats and cheeses those two things if they found a way to replicate those things perfectly with vegan products i would be a vegetarian or a vegan i really would yeah but that day is not here james no the day is not here and so and so i will continue to um, 
not necessarily advocate, but not rebel against the slaughter of cows everywhere because they're too delicious. Yeah. So I had my cheeseburger. You know what I, I said? You know what, Pat? You ch- you're cheating. You're treating yourself. Everybody deserves a treat every now and again. You look good. Look at yourself. Mm-hmm. What's one meal? What's one meal? <laughs> it's only one meal. Yeah, it's just yeah. you got to enjoy yourself sometimes. You, you do. You can't you can't eat grilled chicken and salads yeah. and fruits and vegetables all of the time. Yeah. And I'm like, damn it, good for me. Good for me. <laughs> then I was doing a show mm-hmm. on Saturday night. At a local club, and I'm in the middle of my set. I'm humming, you know. I'm, things are going well, and uh, I noticed two young ladies being a little chatty yeah. in the audience. So I kind of addressed it, yeah. And then uh, one of them said, "Do you want a nacho?" And I was like, "Nacho? I not, you know, I said I can't. Look at this. I'm half a twink. I don't eat. I don't eat this food." And she says to me, judging by the size of your ass, I would think you've eaten some nachos. <laughs> Again, she said, James, in case you missed that, she said, judging by the size of your ass, I would think you've eaten a few nachos. I mean, look, dude. And, uh... And I will admit to you, yeah. I was at a loss for words for a second or two. That's pretty cool. And then uh, <laughs> this club's security, remarkably, was on her immediately. God bless them, because she was going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> she had a little bit of a mouth. I don't know what was bigger, my ass or her mouth. Probably her mouth. What do you, what'd you say? On stage. Well, I, at the time, I started to address her, and then security was over, and then I just kind of, okay, I kind of, I kind of just let it do its thing. I let it, I let them handle. And she's like, uh, "No more talking to me." They said I can't talk to you. I'm like, I think that's a wonderful, <laughs> I think that's a wonderful solution to all of our problems now. Great. And then I just went on because otherwise she would have been an issue that whole time. Yeah. And here's the thing. I know I got a big ass. Yeah, you got a dumper on you. Oh, thank you. It's, it's all strength. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you on that ladder. <laughs> putting those curtains up. <laughs> why do I have you? Why do I have you in my corner? You know what you're supposed to say? What is she talking about? Get out of here. Hey, man. I know these things. The lady's like a big ass. I know these things about myself. Yeah. But you know me. I need... It's a good thing. I need... I wish I had a dumper that big. You're not helping now. I look like Hank Hill. You're not helping. I'd rather look like you, is what I'm saying. I look like Hank Hill. The problem is, even when I'm skinny, I get a big ass. Sure. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about this ass. What's so bad about that? Well... (laughs) So it wasn't about it. it wasn't necessarily that she said it was the way she said it sure you well, know yeah, nachos is bad it but. was just the way it was <laughs> insulting right. right i'm trying to be nice about it I, you're not succeeding I'm sorry you're you, you've made it worse you if have, anything you haven't that's too late okay. you've said what you've said <laughs> you've said what you've said And I got to tell you, the rest of that whole set, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, should I <laughs> should I be standing at this <laughs> angle? Should I? And, and you know, yeah. I mean, what haven't we heard as comedians, right? Right. But sometimes on the right night, the right thing is said, yeah. and you're like, should I be showing this side of me to this side? What is, is this side of the audience now? Seeing the size of my ass? God. Oh, boy. Huh. Because, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where you, like, you know, you know when you know something about yourself, yeah. but you think, ah, nobody else notices this. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you fart, you're like, obviously I can smell it, yeah. but nobody else can smell it. <laughs> right. Yeah. right? Yeah. And when somebody finally calls you out on it, I remember when I dated Amy for years, yeah. not years, for months, yeah. the first couple of months, you know, I would sneak a couple out. You have to. I would sneak a couple out yeah. and I would think, oh, she's not, she can't smell this. There's no way. Until one day, Amy snapped. And was like, Jesus Christ, do you think I can't smell that? And I'm like, what do you what do you mean? She's like, can you smell it? Yeah. I was like, yes. Well, then why do you think I can't smell it? This was kind of the same thing. Right. I know I got a big ass. Yeah. But for it to be made public <laughs> to a room state? full of people. Yeah. Well, I'm up there sharing. It was different. It just hit different. I'm sorry that happened to you. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's all right. I've <laughs> been riding that Peloton like like my life depended on it this week. Because mm-hmm. that's then you think like, oh, I'm gonna lose this ass, and you know, I really don't care. Honestly, at this point, I've been I've been I've been married for twelve years. <laughs> you think it matters at this point? We share property. Yeah, we got both of our names on this mortgage. <laughs> you really think she loves my ass? Ugh. I'm trying to plan another. Uh, trying to plan a trip to Jersey. You got to see your family when you were in California. That must have been nice. It was awesome. Your pops is out there. It was so awesome, yeah. Did you see a lot of them? Yeah, I stayed with them for for oh, most you did. of the trip, yeah. So, you know, nice. let me borrow the truck. It was great to it was great to see him. I hadn't seen him in years. So. Yeah. Does he know how much you hate where he lives? Have you expressed that to him? Well, they they don't live in LA. Yeah. So they're it's, in California. They're in Orange County. So okay. it's better. But he knows. Yeah. Shout out to Dad. He listens. See that's that's the mood right there. Uh, that's the move right there. So you go out there. You go. You grew up in California partially. Yeah. Right. So for you, when you go out to L.A., you're like, well, of course I'm going to stay with my old man. Yeah. Because I'm not going to drop thousands of dollars to stay in a place where I once lived. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to plan a trip to Jersey. Yeah. To see my family. Yeah. And, uh, bro, I'm not. So I grew up in the on the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which from Memorial Day to Labor Day, the price of hotels. Oh, I can't even imagine. And of Airbnbs out there. Yeah. You would think it was Honolulu, right. in in the middle of the winter. Right. What's well, what party. it cost? To stay out there. Yeah. Now, let me make this abundantly clear. I love my parents. Sure. Of course. And I will spend any amount of money that it takes to see them. Yeah. And I'm not laying this on any thicker at all because my mother listens to this podcast. Mom, I would would spend $5,000 to see you. (laughs) <laughs> but holy God, is it is New Jersey making this difficult <laughs> to go out there? I mean, I love my parents. But I don't love Jersey that much. Sure. Three hundred dollars a night for a hotel. Woof, dude. And not like like beachfront? No, nah, beachfront. Well, Are you out of your mind? The shore. Where, where no. Is, where is it? It's in a. T- it's on a river. It's on a river. Okay. Three hundred a night. That's rough. I don't know that I spent three hundred a night to stay in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that Paris was it was three hundred a night. Right. And we got a suite. Maybe. I believe it was a five-star hotel. This is not a five-star hotel. <laughs> I bet. There's not a five-star hotel <laughs> within 60 miles of, of my parents. Sure. This is like, at best, a three-star hotel. 300 bones. That's rough. Because we were going to drive out there. 
we were going to take uh, cuz that's cuz we're still not putting Amy on flights. Mm-hmm. You know. It's worse now, nobody wears masks. It's worse now and she would have to wear a mask and she yeah. can't cuz of her facial pain. It's a whole Yeah. It's a whole thing. So we were going to drive out there. I'm like, dude, as if driving 12 hours <laughs> each way <laughs> isn't bad enough it's like then you get kicked in the nuts with a 300 dollars. i'm like the hell with it you stay i'll fly i'll fly i'll wear my mask yeah. i'll fly out there the things we do yep. the things we do <laughs> meanwhile uh meanwhile our our politicians and our uh celebrities just Continue to be as tone deaf as usual. <laughs> I mean, so in one week, mm-hmm. you have the White House Correspondents' Dinner and the Met Gala, and pretty much with it all within three or four nights of each other, yeah. right? Ugh. Meanwhile, Ukraine is still being shellacked yeah. with bombs every day. I mean, who thought that was a good idea? Who thought the White House Correspondents' Dinner was a good idea? Well, you got to do it, right? You don't have to do it, James. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't. I agree. You don't have to do it. Right. Bet- between that and, and, the, uh, and the Met Gala. I don't know how many times I need to say this, but politicians should not be having any fun. (laughs) There should be no fun being had. There should be no politicians at the Met Gala wearing, I don't care if you're wearing slogans on your back or not. I've said this about the president. I've said this about every politician. No fun. There will be no galas. There will be no costume balls. There will be no White House correspondence dinners. <laughs> We're not having any kids at on the White House lawn for an Easter egg roll. I don't want to see videos of your dog. None of it. There is no fun. <laughs> you you are to have no fun. The mayor of New York wearing a jacket that said end gun violence on the back. Well, that'll do it. (laughs) That'll do it. You know what would really help end gun violence is you in your office meeting with experts. Instead of hanging out on the red carpet with Kim Kardashian (laughs) and Pete Davidson. I mean, how crazy are these people? If I'm the mayor of New York and somebody brings that jacket into my office and says, hey, we've got your we've got your drip for tonight. I'm like, will you get that thing out of here? And I know I'm probably digging myself a hole here. I know it was probably designed by some art students in some impoverished neighborhood. And I'm going to be the big jackass for going off on this. But my position is you don't go at all. White House Correspondents' Dinner. Come on. Am I the only am I the only one left with, with even a modicum of common sense? <laughs> am I the only one who's like, hey, listen, I can't uh I can't go to Ukraine to meet with you, President Zelensky. But I can go to this banquet where Trevor Noah is going to sling moderately funny jokes at people. They were saying he crushed. I was reading some of those jokes. Yeah. Eh. Not great. Eh. <laughs> I'm just saying if I had a room full of writers, I would expect more. Nothing against Trevor Noah. He's sure. certainly more accomplished as a stand-up comedian and as a television host than I am or will ever be. 
But um, did you see e- your boy Elon was at the Met Gala? No, I didn't see it. They were interviewing him on on one of the red carpets. Yeah, he's just such an awkward guy, isn't he? He's crazy. I mean, that's the hallmark of of genius. Is in, is he's a little he's yeah. a little off kilter. Yeah. But he's just so. I mean, he looked like he was. Um, he looked like he was. He was dressed like he was the Mater D on a cruise ship. <laughs> that does look pretty bad, right? That he, jacket's way too. He cool. looks like. Uh, oh, he looks like the Mater D on the Titanic. <laughs> is what he looks like. <laughs> There's Rose. Right here. He yeah. He looks like he was the guy at the top of the stairs, regally looking down <laughs> when the ship was sinking. You remember? We, He's one of those guys that was playing playing the 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 strings. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I love fashion. He he talks like he, he might be a cyborg. There's a very good possibility that he's not human. I love fashion. He is something. He's still buying Twitter, correct? Is that still that's still that's little, still happening? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Thank God. He's been name dropped in the Amber Heard Johnny Depp defamation trial. Is well, that true? He dated Amber. Right. Right after the divorce. Fill me in on the latest. I know you've oh, been you've been man. very um It's just so they just literally an hour ago, Johnny Depp's team rested their case. Yeah. And then an hour ago, as of Tuesday, as of did we Tuesday, record this on Tuesday? Tuesday at, at twelve thirty p.m. Central Time, they rested, yeah. and uh, so it's been a back and forth. Like her team's trying to get it thrown out because of all right. this. The judge ruled that they're in fact going to proceed, and then now Amber Heard, I believe, is the next to take the witness stand. Today. Oh, she hasn't taken the witness she stand may yet. Be on there as we speak, but uh, but yeah. So, it, but I mean, it's just you know, it was a cast of characters coming to to, to back up Johnny's claims. There was a he had this one guy who did a remote interview from his car. Yeah, the guy vaping. Yeah, vaping I saw that guy. And driving. Yeah. <laughs> he started laughing during the. It's just. Can you clarify something for me? Yeah. So he is I'll suing try. her right now? Yes. For $50 million. He's currently the plaintiff, yes. Okay. Yeah. So if he wins, does she have to pay $50, 50 million? million? Or could it be like she, he wins, but for. Fifteen million. Like, can the judge, the judge determine the damages? Probably allocate. Yes, the, the damages. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know, but huh. But but yeah. And then if he loses, she's countersuing for a hundred million. Oh, she's suing him too. Yeah. Oh so, boy, this is so a the, whole. The, I'm telling you, you gotta watch this, dude. Let me ask you something. Yeah. When are you finding time to watch this? On the plane. <laughs> when I take okay. a dump. Okay. Like I, any free time I get, this is my thing now. It used to be like Halo and Moon Knight. It's this, dude. Yeah, this is it. It's great. How do you think it's gonna go? It's looking like it's looking like Johnny's got in the bag. Her lawyers are just constantly like. Didn't she just fire her PR team yeah. before she's taking the stand? Yes. Yes. But didn't he also tweet like a lot of or not tweet text a lot They're of both horrific things? People. To yeah. each other, yeah. Oh my God, it was like, yeah, and you got to see all those things too. It's, yeah. But that's there's so much to just, and I'm not taking sides, by the way. Yeah. It's just a, it's an absolute masterpiece to watch <laughs> and, and filter through. There's just so much. It's so much fun. Th- these people's pain is so. And she much took fun. a shit in his bed. Is she, that yeah, part of it too? The herd turd uh, was, uh, yeah, it was a big part of it. That's you know, she's that's. If 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 he gets nothing else out of this trial, her being a bed pooper is the one <laughs> thing that he can, can you, walk away with. Can you ever be employed in Hollywood again <laughs> after it's confirmed you shat in somebody's bed? <laughs> She's still doing I Aquaman f- too, so I don't I know. I feel like that's got to change the way people interact with you on set, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. Because you could be the best person in the world, James. Sure. But if I found out that for any reason you shat in somebody's bed, yeah. even if it was just a moment of weakness, if you were having a bad day, like it in would, anger, right? <laughs> it would still fundamentally change our relationship. <laughs> yeah. You and I have a a wonderful friendship. Yeah. And uh, I like you, and I think a lot of 
good things about you. Ditto, yeah. And I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't not think those things about you sure. if it came to light that I found out you shat in somebody's bed. Right. I'm just saying <laughs> it would it would shift the dynamic a little bit. Understandably, yeah. Yeah. Like if she if she's shooting a movie <laughs> and everybody has this wonderful dynamic yeah. and then it comes to light that that happened I don't know that I'm going to be the first to break the ice with you that day. <laughs> right. Is all I'm saying. Is she con is she currently shooting a movie or no? She can't be currently shooting a movie cuz she's in this case, I'm I assuming. believe they've either They've either done principal photography at least on or, Aquaman too. or finished production on oh, it. Man. Yeah. So she's that's all done. People are there's like three million signatures to get her off of it. It's crazy. It's 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 absolutely nuts. Uh, but yeah, but they're just this you get please get on top of this. It's almost over. He's got it he's gotta stop getting plastic surgery. My God, does he look nearly unrecognizable? Yeah, he does not look good. No, he doesn't. Um but obviously, it's been proven that he's he's a bit of a maniac as well. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, this the story's he wanted was, to burn her alive and that was like and, a, and have relations with her corpse. He, text, that, he texted that to uh, uh, Vision, Paul Bettany. That's what he texted that to. Paul, he texted Paul Bettany, Paul Bettany, that that I would that. like to set her on fire, sure, and have coitus, coitus with her, with her burnt corpse. Boy, that's a little. It's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, even before, and her team was trying to make the case that, you know, his character was in question before they were together because yeah. of the drugs and alcohol and, like, all that stuff. So so he's – she alleged that he abused her. He says that's f- false, and that's what he's suing over. Yes. I think so. Okay. That's, you think so? How do you even not know what this case is about? I Look, I'm trying to – He's, what he's, is it? The root of it. The root of it is the Washington Post op-ed that she wrote in 2018 about uh, being the, being a victim, being a victim, and not specifically naming him, yeah. but implying that it was him enough for it to destroy his ability to make money. Gotcha. All right, there you go. That makes complete sense. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'm not an ounce more interested in this <laughs> trial. After all of that, Come then when we started, she, I have no interest. She's about to talk, bro. It's gonna be sick. I have zero interest. You've, you've. After all of that, she got diagnosed with like, like what, what was it? Borderline personality disorder and like all, yeah. like all this stuff. Okay. And she's about to talk. After that entire debriefing, and all those salacious details, Whatever. I still uh, really, really don't care. And I understand I'm in the minority. I understand people are fascinated by this trial. It's great. People are watching it constantly. Yeah, look that I get it. Did you see Drew Drew Barrymore was uh, making light <laughs> yeah. of the trial, and everybody got pissed <laughs> off at her. A, she had to apologize. Yeah. This is what happens when non-comedians make jokes. She didn't even make a joke. She just said it was a whole layer of crap. She said what everybody it's is thinking. The truth. It's literally insane. Yeah. And all these nutballs went on her social media. And it's not funny to make fun of domestic abuse. She wasn't making fun of domestic abuse. It wasn't what happened at all. Making fun of the trial. And she puts out this long-ass statement. Who cares? I will try. What did she say? Pull that up if you can. Yeah. The Drew Barrymore statement. She had to apologize. She had to apologize for referencing how insane this trial was on her talk show. Mind you, when she said all this on her talk show, r- raucous laughter. Oh, yeah. Raucous laughter. It doesn't matter because there's no context. One layer of crazy, seven dip layer of insanity. Yeah, she called it a seven layer dip of insanity. It's a great she's not line. wrong. Based on what I've heard, she's not wrong. It's a good line. But uh, Where's the apology? she posted an apology video, which I'm not going to watch. Oh, my God. Look at this. Scroll up a little bit. Here, No, no, the other way. The other way. There you go. Oh, a little, now I... There you go. She writes, she says, uh, it has come to my attention that I have offended people with making light of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And for that, I just want to deeply apologize and appreciate everyone who spoke out. This this can be a teachable moment for me and how I move forward and how I conduct myself. 
yeah, I, just stay where you are. Or you could just say, you know what? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. It was it was an offhand remark. Yeah. Do any of you lunatics out there really think that I don't take domestic violence or abuse seriously? Do any of you really believe that? That's what you should have said. Right. Now, I don't know that that would have gone over as well with her audience <laughs> and all of the people who are upset. A teachable moment. Everybody has teachable moments now. It's a teachable moment for me. Mm-hmm. It's a teachable moment. Do better. That one I love. I love when people say that to me. Um, heard what you said today. Do better. <laughs> How about you kiss my ass? How about that? Is that better? I love these people who just think like, that's an indication of a person's character. They're, and they're they're trying to crush somebody. I mean, I really don't care if Drew Barry wants to deal with this or not. Yeah, I'm just thinking of myself. But <laughs> of course. This can be a teachable moment for me in how I can move forward and conduct myself. You'd think she got on TV and was like, you know, Amber Heard had it coming. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, like yeah. you would think what she said. I could be a more thoughtful and better person moving forward because all I want to do is be a good person. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like you're not any fun at all. Yeah. I could be more thoughtful and better. Or you can keep talking like that and get more people watching that show of yours. That's also something you can do. Yeah, I'd probably tune in if you talk like that. Anyway. Well, James, I, I look forward with great anticipation yeah. to see how this goes down. It's going to be. And who, who comes out victorious. If he wins, obviously she's going to appeal, right? I got to imagine they're not going to. You would appeal that immediately. Yeah. And then maybe we'll have a second trial. It's going to be. It's going to be. And you could have forever. something else to listen to while you're taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> right? I hope. Hey, uh, big news in Chicago. Yeah. You know, we uh, this city continues to deal with um, this city continues to deal with gun violence, senseless tragedies every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, robberies, carjackings, all sorts of, of lack of resources for certain neighborhoods that they could really use them. But good to see that this city, in its infinite wisdom, and its fantastic list of priorities is now giving away canned drinking water. Have you heard this one? No. I mean, this is this is. I, I, so oh. <laughs> they're they're not selling it, but they're canning our drinking water here. And you know what they're calling it, James? They're calling it Chicago, which is. Not only the worst sounding name that you could imagine for a product, but when you see it, it just, it looks gross. The word, the collection of letters, C-H-I-C-A-G-W-A. Look at that. Does that just, is that just an ugly word? It's an ugly word. Sounds like something you'll wash off of yourself. Right. It's like, it's like hemorrhoids. You ever see hemorrhoids in writing? And you're like, it's just a gross word. It's just a gross word. The word hemorrhoid, just the look of the word hemorrhoid, just looks disgusting. Well, why? Chicago. Why didn't they make that a U? Chicago. I don't know. Because, James, because <laughs> they don't have anybody with half a brain that's involved in this city government. Look at this mayor. She's all proud. She's so proud. She's like, this is this is what's gonna win me re-election. Chicago. They fix they feature six designs touching on the city's history along the Great Lakes. It will hold on, scroll down. It's gonna be available at for free at various events throughout the city. This summer, as well as locations around the city. Oh, God. Be a wiener circle? Oh, wait. Actually, are they going to be selling it? Because it says they'll be available for free at various events, as well as locations throughout the city. I think 
it still means it's free. I think. I want to ask for this at Wiener Circle. Yeah. Before I leave. Manny's Cafeteria. <laughs> I, I, Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Just make it a U, dude. It makes it so much better. What are you Who? thinking, dude? <laughs> You know, sometimes in um, sometimes in in, in my career, mm-hmm. I'm involved in pitch meetings, and pitch meetings are when everybody goes around the room, and they pitch their ideas. Yeah, and it can be at times nerve wracking. Sometimes you don't think you have good enough ideas. Sometimes you you have an idea that you like, but you're not sure how it's going to be received. And I think a lot of times you can get in your own head and you can think, ah, is this a good enough idea? Should I pitch this one? If if you're in a field like that and you're ever in a position where you're thinking, are my ideas good enough? I want this. I want this to be a, a confirmation that your ideas may not be great. But they are infinitely better than this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like I could not imagine being in a in a pitch meeting and being like, "This is the." Look at it. It looks the word. The word offends me. The word is bad. The word offends me. I like the designs. The designs are good. That word, that word, the look of that word, <laughs> is more offensive to me. Than the spelling of a derogatory word for a lady's parts. It looks uglier. It's a grosser word. Right. That word is as offensive to me. And that is saying something, because I do not like that word. I'm not a friend a fan of that word. At all. Chicago. The whole idea of water out of a can sounds disgusting. It's not, it's good. Have you had water out of a can? Liquid death. Have you ever had it's that? It's water? Yeah. It doesn't taste like metal at all? No. What they is line, liquid they, death? They, it's canned water. And they line, so they line the inside of the cans with like a, like a, a environmentally safe film. Why are they the calling liquid. water liquid death? Is it caffeinated it's just, water? No, it's just marketing. It's re- that's really all it is? That's all it is. It's just canned I thought water. liquid death was like no. caffeinated an energy drink or something. No. No. It is... There, there is a, there is a, a, a mineral water version, and there is no a shit. sparkling water version. Yeah, Liquid Death is great, and it's just, it's just marketing. How is in Liquid Death? There's no difference between that and a Dasani or a Poland Springs or any of those. Not really. No. Yeah. Water in a can. Water in a can. Sponsors. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, mountain, mountain water, uh, or I think this is the sparkling water. No shit. It's very good. How do you like that? It's very good. Are they flavors? Maybe flavors. Oh yes, and they do they do flavors as well. But, but yeah. So not only are we completely behind the trend with this, we're like very very late to the party of canned water. Well, the colloquial we is yeah yeah. I've been on this trend for a minute, but. Uh, I expect nothing less from you. I mean, hey, you got to stay up. I expect nothing. You're always on the trends. You, you always know what's cool. You got to stay up, baby. But, uh, yeah, no, this is this looks terrible. Chicago. Let me tell you. You know who's living his best life right now? Can't wait to learn who. No. The Tiger King. Oh, yeah? That guy. What? <laughs> you want to talk about a guy that is not allowing anything to hold him back. I mean, this is a guy that regardless of what's going on in his life, no matter if he's charged with conspiring to murder somebody, yeah. he is still trying to live his life. He's engaged. He's engaged and he's going to be married in jail. As soon as his divorce from his current husband is finalized, <laughs> He just ordered $11,000 custom tuxedos for his prison wedding. He's going to marry another inmate. You know, there are times in life, and I'm guilty of this, where you think, ah, 
I've done all I can. Maybe you're a little older and you're thinking, my best days are behind me. What's the point? This is a guy. Nothing's holding him back from living his life. <laughs> it's like, I don't care if I'm in jail. I don't care if I'm in jail. I'm getting married. Yeah. I mean, have you ever really think about that? Think of what a what a can-do attitude you got to have <laughs> to be in jail. Serving a, a, a how how long is he in for? He's in he's 22. in he's not getting out. 22 years. He's in jail for 22 years. And he's like, listen, all right, make lemonade out of lemons. So I'm in jail. That's not going to stand in the way of true love. (laughs) Hopefully this time. Now let me preemptively apologize for uh, making light of a man who's in jail for conspiring to commit murder. (laughs) I will try and do better next time. I'll use this as a teaching moment. And try to better myself moving forward and try and be a more thoughtful person. But if I were in jail, if I were in jail, I would think my life is over. What is there to live for? I'm stuck in this cell. I can't do anything that I like. I can't do anything for fun. This is it. I'm just going to play out the string. Not Joe Exotic. (laughs) Joe Exotic's out there looking for love. Let Joe Exotic be an inspiration to all of you out there. Not for what he's in jail for. You might be sitting there at a dead-end job. You might be sitting there in a dead-end relationship. You might think your best days are behind you. There's nothing left for you to do, for you to accomplish. Look to Joe Exotic. And know that there is always a new horizon out there to explore. There's always something out there for you to aspire to. It's never too late. Is he 60? How old is he? 59. 59. Yeah. This is a sixth Also, wedding, like, you know, this is what's amazing about this society we live in. Uh-huh. You know he's not paying for those $11,000 tuxedos. Of course not. Right? How does he... There's so many moving parts to this. How does he find the designer? How does the designer find him? Uh-huh. How does anybody even know he's getting married? Does he have... Do you think he has, like, a like a business manager? He probably has a manager? PR team. A PR person? You think he's got all that? Well, he's. I would assume that he sold the rights to Netflix to do a story on him, and he's able to keep that money because he got it legally. So he's paying people to to do all this and get the word out. Huh. Those are my assumptions, anyway. But yeah, I mean, you know, he's. <laughs> was he going to not tell people? <laughs> he wants to be. Look at him. And they let him. They let him do. They let him wear a special tux in the jail? I mean, it's a wedding. You know, they, yeah, probably. I mean, he's the Tiger King. I didn't say? think you can get married and have a ceremony in jail. You know, all kinds of stuff in jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love how in the whole thing, it's the whole thing is, scroll back. I love how in the whole thing, the whole article is about him getting married. The whole the, the headline of the article that drew my attention to this was that he was getting the tuxedos made. Uh-huh. And then it's like they just list it as an aside. Like, the former zookeeper, who is currently serving a 22-year sentence for plotting to kill his arch nemesis, Carol Baskin, is making sure the pair will look as dapper as possible right, on their special day later this year. They just, they just slide that in. Like, oh, by the way, in case anybody forgot, he, he was trying to murder somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in jail for 22 years. Yeah. But there is something there is something to be said. <laughs> it could also be what, what could be being said throughout this is that he's an insane person. Yeah. 
that could also be the big takeaway from this yeah. is that he's crazy. Man, it's been a rough couple months for Disney, huh? It has. Well, have you been following that at all? No. So, you know, the don't say gay bill yeah. was introduced, right? Yep. And Disney didn't say anything about it because they're a corporation. Yeah, what, what? And why should anybody give a shit <laughs> about what a corporation says? Because I'm going to be honest with all of you. Even the corporations you think are good are still filled with some terribly nefarious people yeah. and have one interest in mind, and that's making money. They have no souls. They're corporations. So people were upset that Disney didn't say anything. You know, how can you not say anything? You have LGBTQ employees, blah, blah, blah. Right. So Disney comes out, and they say, all right, we're against the don't say gay bill. Yeah. Right? Right. Well, that's all that Oompa Loompa down there DeSantis needed to hear. And then he's like, oh, yeah, we're stripping your tax status. Because I guess Disney World is kind of like the Vatican down there. Yeah, I heard about that. They have their own tax status. He's like, you know what? If you're against my bills or the bills here, we're going to strip all of your tax status. And I don't know where that stands. Yeah. So then this guy who's the PR guy, he's been in the job three months. He's like, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so he, he, I guess, probably was asked to resign. He's probably the fall guy for all of this. But um, so now they got a new, a new person in charge. I just, you know, I talk about this in my special quite a bit. It's just, you know, all these corporations. A, I have never in my life not once seen legislation passed or seen a bill passed and thought hey what does sony think of this <laughs> i know what my opinion is on this i mean i know i know what i feel but has is toro lawnmowers ever going to speak <laughs> up when are they going to say something what is going on? Yeah. They're going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Huh. Well, what does Levi's jeans think of this? <laughs> is Levi's going to weigh in? A lot of other companies have weighed in. What's Levi's jeans got to say about all this? That's never entered my mind. Yeah. I've never thought... <laughs> I've never thought about us not entering the fray in Ukraine. Be like, what do you, what do you think at Gatorade? What do you guys have to say about this? Awfully quiet. Corporations are filled with horrible people. Let's understand that. The ones who come out in favor of something you believe in, Believe me, they're against lots of other things you believe in because they have one interest and one interest only, and that's the jackloaders that are on their board of directors. That's all they care about. You corporations, you always feel this pressure that you got to come out and take a stand. Stop, because you're going to screw it up. You don't know what you're doing trying to wade into the arena of human emotions is not something that you're equipped for. You're a bunch of robots. I mean, I, I almost feel bad for Disney. I don't. <laughs> why? I don't. Why don't I feel bad no, for them? Do I you? don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm incapable of feeling one way or the other. Good. Anyway. <laughs> you morons out there tweeting at corporations to see what they think you know that's the next one you know once this whole roe v wade opinion is issued all these all these companies are gonna have to be like oh shit yep oh god what are we gonna do now coca-cola right now is already having 
a shareholders meeting. How do we want to handle this? Yeah. And you may be asking yourself, Pat, where do you fall on that issue of Roe versus Wade? You know where I fall? Whatever women think. (laughs) That's what I believe. (laughs) I don't believe that me and this big, dumb man face should have any opinion about any of it. Take all the women in the world or in the country, let them vote, and majority wins, and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with women deciding this and me not having an opinion. Aren't you in favor? I'm in in favor of women and only women (laughs) making a decision about this. You saying you're against it? I'm against. I'm against not having women make the decisions. That's what I'm against and for. It's just women. (laughs) Only ladies. Okay? That is the official position of this podcast on abortions rights. I'm for whatever women say. And on that note, on that note, thank you all for... uh, for listening this week. We appreciate you as always. Uh, Don't forget, share the special, watch the special, watch the podcast on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pat Tomasulo Comedy. Find me on all the socials as well. I'm a good time on there. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week.